So about a month and a half ago, I graduated college. Yay! Which also meant that I lost access to the library's camera and filming equipment. I still wanted to make YouTube videos, but without any of those things, then I needed a new primary camera. In my mind, I debated getting a DSLR, a mirrorless, but I realized that I don't really know how those work, and I don't want to be a photographer. And since I would primarily be using them for this YouTube channel, then that big of an investment would never recuperate its value. So then I decided maybe I should get another smartphone. But I realized that the best smartphone cameras usually come on the flagship devices, and I didn't really want to spend like $1,000 on a phone just to film YouTube videos. So I called up my friends in Cupertino, Google answered, and I said, hey guys, can you make a cheap smartphone with an awesome camera? And they said, that's a brilliant idea. And then in crazy turnaround time, two weeks later, it was on my doorstep. And here it is, the Google Pixel 3a, Google's $400 budget mid-tier smartphone with arguably one of the best smartphone cameras around. But what do I, a no-name YouTuber who missed the hype train by like three weeks, have to say about it? Let's find out. To begin, I'm gonna talk about the $400 price point. Most people that have reviewed this have praised it for its budget-friendly price. In my opinion though, I still think that it's about $100 too much. I think that $300 is the optimal price for the Pixel 3a. My argument being is that the Xiaomi Pocophone F1 still exists, and that phone offers much higher specs for a lower price. And when this phone first came out, Google was offering a $100 in-store credit, Amazon was offering a $100 gift card, Best Buy was offering a $100 gift card. So it kind of indicates that $300 is the normal price for this phone. I say, if you're going to get this device and you're in no rush, then I would say wait for one of those promotional sales and get it at that $300 price. But that's just a cost saving suggestion. Now that we've gotten my issue with price out of the way, let's talk about this phone. The Pixel 3a is honestly one of the best devices that I've ever used. The transition process from my old phone to my new phone was completely seamless. I've never had it been able to transfer Wi-Fi passwords from one device to another, and so I was extra happy about that. Moving on to the camera, it is in fact one of the best smartphone cameras that I've ever used. In fact, this video is being filmed on the Pixel 3. It's not actually in the box. Joke's on you. <laughs> so you can be the judge whether you think video quality is good or not. Something weird though that happens, and this seems to be the effect of having a heavily software-based camera, is there's this kind of warble effect. So if you check out my last video, then there was kind of this weird kind of texture around what I was holding. It seems to be mainly limited to close-up video shots. The photos, though, have turned out phenomenally. The portrait mode has a really nice bokeh effect. Close-ups are highly detailed. It captures a lot of color. And the front-facing camera is also a very good camera. This phone also has a camera setting called Night Sight which effectively takes a bunch of low light pictures, compiles them together, and creates one image that's as if it were in a much brighter environment. For reference, this picture was taken with all the lights in my room off and only a little bit of light coming from the hall. The Pixel 3a and the 3a XL both have beautiful OLED screens. And if you don't know about OLED technology, basically what happens is each pixel is able to turn on or turn off and you don't have a backlight. The Poco phone, does not have an OLED screen, it has an LCD screen. So if OLED screens are a major deal to you, then I can see the argument being made for this phone over the Poco phone. I'm also a big fan of the 18 and a half by nine aspect ratio, which means that it's much more narrow and I'm able to hold it in one hand. Most smartphones nowadays, you have to type with two fingers or you have to reach with your thumb. This phone is able to solve that problem by having a narrower screen. One of the weird things though is sometimes my palm will touch the side of the screen and then it will start doing some weird screen recognition things. So this feature is seriously cool. Apparently it's been around since the Pixel 2, but what it'll do is it'll listen and in an offline mode it will find out what song is being played in the environment and then tell you on the screen and in the notification bar what it is. Another thing that I love is always being up to date on the latest version of Android. So one of the problems that I've had in the past is I'll buy a phone, 
maybe like a year after it's come out, and the manufacturer just stops supporting it at that point. But having a Pixel phone guarantees that you always have the latest version of Android. And if you're an iPhone user looking to switch, this is probably going to be one of the best Android experiences that you can get. You're going to have timely updates, you're going to have a great device, and you're going to be able to take phenomenal pictures. And it has a headphone jack. Something I'm not crazy about is the battery life on this. Through normal use of browsing the internet, YouTube, Netflix, I was able to get about five hours of on-screen time. Which isn't bad, but my previous phone, the Moto Z2 Force, was able to reach like eight or nine hours of on-screen time, which was just ridiculous. It is nice because Google added their 18 watt fast charger, so it kind of makes up for having a mediocre-ish battery. So something else that bothers me is having these downward firing speakers. I would have much preferred them on the bezel, just because when I watch videos or play games, then I tend to put my hand there and it covers these speakers. Love them or you hate them, you know, they're me. And finally, the fingerprint sensor has been kind of one of the worst I've ever used. It won't recognize my finger more than half the time. And I've put in my fingerprints multiple times to try to mitigate that issue. But it still occurs. So that's kind of one point away for the Pixel 3a. In conclusion, I think this is probably one of the best budget smartphones you can buy this year. But if taking the best smartphone pictures isn't a big deal to you, and you're willing to sacrifice an OLED screen, then I would say maybe consider the Pocophone F1, just because you get better specs, again, for $100 less than what this retails. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you agree with my opinion on the Pixel 3a, if you disagree, if there's any alternatives that you think that are better out there. Also, let me know what you guys think I should review next. And as always, hit like, get subscribed. See you next week.